<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, if at breakfast time you're... Yes, hungry as a lion, well, sir, just you dive into a heaping bowlful of delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Man, oh man, there's a treat that'll tame the old appetite. In fact, it's the cat's meow. Meow. Yes, these ready-to-serve giant grains are shot from guns, are nourishing, crisp, tender, loaded with nut-like flavor. So tomorrow, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Lorna Elliott had been away to college in the States. But when summer came, she returned to the Yukon to spend her vacation with her brother, Dr. Seth Elliott, who practiced in the mining community of Faro City. On her second morning in Faro City, Lorna encountered the man she had been yearning and yet dreading to see. His name was Jack Rolfe. Jack. I heard you were back, Lorna. I, I don't think we'd better be seen talking to each other. What's the matter? Are you afraid it might get back to Seth? If you want to know. Yes, I am. Why didn't you ever write to me, Lorna? While you were away in the States. Don't you realize that I couldn't? Seth made me promise that I wouldn't write to you or see you ever again. What right has he to dictate whether you can or can't see me? Please try to understand, Jack. I owe everything to Seth. He's even putting me through college. Big-hearted Seth. <laughs> the only reason he's sending you to college is to keep us apart. That's not fair, Jack. Seth has taken care of me ever since I was a little girl. He's been wonderful to me. It was no more than his duty to take care of you. After all, he's your brother. He's my guardian, too. If it weren't for that, would you marry me? Well, I... Oh, please don't ask me that. Don't you see that... Jack. What's the matter? It's Seth. He's seen us and he's coming over here. Let him come. Lorna, I thought you promised me you wouldn't see this fellow again. Please don't make a scene, Seth. Listen, I'll... Elliot... I'm getting pretty fed up with your high-handed tactics. No one's talking to you, Rolf, so keep your remarks to yourself. For your information, Lorna and I happen to love each other. What's more, I've just asked her to marry me. Save your breath, Rolf. The answer is no. What have you got against me? I won't mince words. You're not good enough for Lorna. If you think I can't support her properly, you're wrong. My stepbrother and I struck it rich last winter. Our mine is worth at least 50000 That doesn't alter the situation one bit. The point is... I don't intend to let Lorna throw herself away on any roughneck sourdough. You've got better plans for, I suppose? You bet I have. Lorna's attending one of the finest schools in the East. She's moving in a completely different world from Pharaoh City. You don't belong in that world, Rolf, and you might as well know it right now. You think you're pretty high and mighty, Elliot, but you're not going to keep Lorna and me apart any longer. I'm warning you, Rolf. Stay away from my sister from now on. If you don't, I swear oh, please, I... Please, please don't quarrel anymore. The whole town's watching. Let him rave, Lorna. It's time we had a showdown. Go ahead, Elliot. Go ahead and tell me what you're going to do if I don't stay away from Lorna. Rolf, I'll give you till tomorrow morning to make up your mind that you aren't going to see Lorna anymore. And what if I tell you I'm going to keep right on seeing her? Then you'd better keep out of range of my gun. Oh. So it's gunplay you want, Elliot. Maybe you'd like to suggest a place for a meeting. 
I'll be waiting for you down on Hangman's Creek at 8 tomorrow morning. Seth, you must be out of your mind. You, you keep out of this, Lorna. I'll have something to say to you when we get home. As for you, Rolf, this is your last warning. If you don't change your tune by tomorrow morning, I'll gun you down with no more compunction than I'd shoot a mad dog. Now, wait a minute, oh, dog. If there's going to be any gunplay, it'll have to be done fair and square. Yeah, Meaning what? Right. Meaning you'll have to have a regular duel. Ain't that so, fellas? Right, right. You want to make sure everything's done fair and square? Come along and see for yourself. That suits yeah. me fine. I want plenty of witnesses on hand when I drill this polecat. Hey, <laughs> Jack Rolfe's stepbrother was a man named Abe Slater. A short time after the crowd had dispersed, Slater walked into the North Star Cafe. He signaled to a tough-looking white man who was seated at a table with a shifty-eyed half-breed. The white man rose from his chair. You wait here, Mucklock. Look like Slater want to see me in the back room about something. Uh, wait. <laughs> What do you want to see me about, Slater? Listen, Finn, have you heard about that duel my stepbrother's going to fight with Doc Elliott? Everybody in town heard about it. Suppose I tell you it's worth a thousand dollars to me to have Doc Elliott win that duel. You mean you want your brother to get killed? Jack Rolfe ain't my brother. He's my stepbrother. I still don't savvy. What you got against Rolfe? Look, Finn, I'm hiring you to do a job. Why I want that job done is none of your business. You ain't hired me to do nothing yet. Before I take any job from you, I want to know the whole deal. All right. Jack Rolfe and me are co-owners of the Pharaoh Prince's mine. Yeah, I know that. And it's plenty rich mine, too. Neither one of us has any close relatives except each other. In other words, I'm Jack's next of kin. <laughs> so if anything ever happened to Jack, his share of the mine would pass to you. You catch on quick. Yeah, it's a smart idea, Slater. But how are you going to make sure Yak gets killed? For all you know, Doc Elliott will be the one who stops late. That's where you come in. How do you figure? When a duel comes off tomorrow morning, suppose someone is hiding close by. Out of sight of the crowd, but within gun range of the duelers. Go on. The two duelers start walking away from each other. Pretty soon they get the signal to turn and fire. When that happens, the person that's hiding already has a beat on Jack. When their two guns go off, his goes off too. And Jack gets plugged right between the eyes. Yeah, that's pretty slick. But things might not work out smooth as you figure. What do you mean? Suppose Yak kills Doc Elliot before Doc gets a chance to fire. In that case, how are you going to explain Yak getting plugged? Or suppose Doc himself happens to hit Yak. How are you going to explain the fact that two bullets hit him? I've already thought of that. You just listen to what I'm going to tell you now. It was later that same morning that Abe Slater called on Dr. Elliot. The doctor greeted his visitor curtly. What do you want, Slater? It's about that duel tomorrow morning, Doc. What about it? Well, Jack ain't so sure he wants to go through with a duel after all. You mean he's turned yellow? Well, let's say he's decided to be reasonable about Lorna. Am I to understand from that that he's willing to keep away from her from now on? That's about it. In that case, there needn't be any duel. Tell him he can stop worrying. It won't be necessary for me to puncture his mangy hide. Well, it sure is decent of you, Doc. Only it, it isn't as simple as all that. Why isn't it? Pharaoh City's a pretty tough place, Doc. If the boys ever found out that Jack turned yellow, he'd be laughed out of town. Hmm. What am I supposed to do? Take out my handkerchief and weep? Well, it's like this. Jack wants to know if you wouldn't be willing to put on a... Well, a fake duel. A fake duel? Yeah, a duel that would look like a real gunfight. Only you'd fire over Jack's head and he'd fire over your head. What is this? Some scheme that you and Rolf have cooked up? It's no trick, Doc. Honest, it isn't. You can tell your sister beforehand what the arrangement is. You know doggone well Jack wouldn't try any funny stuff under those circumstances. I suppose you're right. But why should I be party to any such farce just for Rolf's sake? What do you got to lose, Doc? If you don't agree to this scheme, Jack will probably have to fight you just to save his face. So why don't you play along and avoid bloodshed? After all, Jack's willing to promise he'll stay away from Lorna. <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Doc? I can hardly wait to tell Lorna about this. 
After leaving the doctor's cabin, Abe Slater went to the mine in search of his stepbrother. He told Jack a story similar to the one he had just told Dr. Elliot. And the doc told me that if you'll do like he asks, he won't make any more trouble about you and Lorna seeing each other. What's the idea of this fake duel business? Oh, that's just to save his face. He's afraid that if people ever found out how he turned yellow, he'd be laughed right out of town. Uh, there's something fishy about all this. Why do you say that? It seems to me Doc Elliot is changing his tune awful sudden-like. He hates me. I wonder if this couldn't be a trick. A trick? What kind of a trick? He gets me to aim high. And then when I fire over his head, he lets me have it. Oh, listen, Jack. Elliot may be an ornery cuss, but you know he wouldn't pull a trick like that. Besides, he says if you don't trust him... I can go over this evening and get it straight from Lorna herself. Ah. In that case, I guess it must be on the level. Well, how about it? All right. Tell him if he'll stop interfering between Lorna and me, I'll fight that fake duel with him. Just the way he asks. Meanwhile, Lorna Elliott had gone to Dawson City to get help from Sergeant Preston. Miss Elliott, as a member of the Northwest Mounted Police, it's my job to prevent gunplay. I can promise you that duel will not take place. Then you will come back with me. I'll be ready to leave as soon as I've notified the inspector. Come on, King. You and I are going to Farrell City with Miss Elliot. <laughs> it was evening when the sergeant and Lorna Elliot arrived back in Farrell City. The doctor was seated in his cabin, mixing a prescription as they entered. Lorna, where the dickens have you been all this time? Why, oh, I beg your pardon, Sergeant. I didn't see you. Hello, Doctor. Seth. I went to Dawson and brought back Sergeant Preston. He's going to stop this crazy duel between you and Jack. I'm afraid you've made a useless trip, Sergeant. Oh? Huh? How's that? Jack Rolfe is not quite so willing to risk his hide as he pretended he was. What do you mean? The fact is, he's turned yellow. Oh. We'll continue our story in just a moment. <laughs> King Cole was a merry old soul. <laughs> yes, a merry old soul was he. That is, until one fine morning at the breakfast table when he called for his pipe and he called for his bowl. Thunderation! What is this? What is what, Your Majesty? Look! Just look at my bowl! Yes, Your Highness? Why, it's... It, the bowl's empty. There's nothing in it. Well, uh, you, you see... Well, where is it? Uh, where's what, Your Highness? What? My Quaker puffed wheat. That's what? Well, well, you see, a terrible thing has happened. We're fresh out of Quaker puffed wheat. Fresh out? Yes. You see, you had two helpings yesterday morning. Emptied the package. And, well, we forgot to order more. Oh. And, well, sir, you absolutely refused to eat any other kind of breakfast cereal. Oh. But, uh... Uh, may I make a suggestion? Out with it, knave. Might I suggest you just try this? Try what? This Quaker puffed rice. Well, all right. I Quaker puffed rice, did you say? Yep. It's shot from guns, too, just like the wheat. Ah. Looks good. Say, these are premium grains exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. They're shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. Say, <laughs> does this ever taste good? <laughs> and it's good for you. Quaker puffed rice as well as Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. <laughs> now, say, Jay, now here's what. From now on, let's keep both kinds on hand. We'll eat Quaker puffed wheat one day and Quaker puffed rice the next. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a deal. And say, fellas and girls, you should try just that in your home. And here's another tip. Keep a good supply of both kinds on hand at all times. Yes, enjoy the breakfast fit for a king. Eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. When Lorna and Sergeant Preston arrived at Dr. Elliot's cabin, he told them that Jack Rolfe was afraid to go through with the duel. I, I can't believe it. it. Certainly doesn't sound like Jack Rolfe. That's not all. 
Now, wait till you hear the rest. The rest? It seems Rolf doesn't want anyone to know what a yellow pup he is. He's afraid he'll get laughed out of town if folks ever find out. So he wants to put on a fake duel. What do you mean? Well, he wants us to go ahead and pretend we're fighting a real duel. But we'll each fire harmlessly over the other man's head. And what did you say? I, I wasn't going to at first, but I finally agreed. Well, Doctor, I'm afraid I'm going to have to interfere with those arrangements. How so? Dueling is just as much against the law in the Yukon Territory as it is anywhere else in Canada. Therefore, there's not going to be any duel tomorrow morning, harmless or otherwise. Sergeant Preston left the Elliot's cabin and set out to find Jack Rolfe. In the streets of Pharaoh City, he drew rain at the sight of Abe Slater. Oh, Blackie, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Well, what are you doing in town, Sergeant? I came here to stop the duel between your stepbrother and Dr. Elliot. I've already seen the doctor. Now I'm looking for Jack. Well, maybe you don't know it, Sergeant, but that duel is going to be a fake. Dr. Elliot told me that. But well, duels of any kind are against the law, and I intend to stop this one. Can I find Jack at the mine? Uh, as a matter of fact, you can't, Sergeant. He went over to Beaver Creek on business. When will he be back? Maybe not for another hour or two yet. Would you like me to give him the message? No, thanks, but you might tell him to look me up as soon as he gets back to town. I'll be staying at the Maple Leaf Hotel. Why, sure, Sergeant, I'll do that. Come on, Blackie. Abe Slater went to the cafe and spoke to Finn in the back room. What's up, Slater? Sergeant Preston's in town, and he's aiming to stop the duel. Don't he know it's going to be a fake? Yeah, but he's still going to try and stop it. He's already talked to Doc Elliott, and now he's looking for Jack. Oh, that ain't good. Well, we got to get that money out of town and keep him away till the duel is all over with. How are you going to do that? Well, suppose Preston gets a note from Mounty headquarters telling him to come back to Dawson City right away, saying he's needed on urgent business or something. He'd have to obey orders, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. Guess he would at that. Only who's going to give him the note so he won't get suspicious? What about Mucklock Yo? You mean that Siwash half-breed that trails around after you all the time? Sure, he's sitting out in the cafe right now. Think he'll do it? For little fire water, he'd do practically anything. Suppose he squeals on us afterwards. Ah, he wouldn't dare. I got enough on him to hang him. Besides, I saved his life once. That's why he follows me around all the time. All right, get him in here, and I'll start writing out the note. A short time later, Sergeant Preston was approached by the half-breed, Mucklock Joe, in front of the hotel. You... Sergeant Preston? That's right. Uh, bring note. Dawson City. Oh, thanks. Let's see what it says. Return at once to Dawson City. You're needed here urgently. Signed, the inspector. Who gave you this note? Man, Marnie headquarters give note. What do you look like? Not remember. Wear red coat. Think him inspector. Very well. Uh, did he pay you to bring this note to Pharaoh City? He give ten dollar. Say you give five dollar note deliver. All right. Here's your money. Ah, me go now. Sergeant Preston checked out of the hotel and rode out of Pharaoh City with King trotting at his side. About a mile out of town, he halted. Oh, Blackie, easy down. No, King, I'm not going to Dawson. I'm going to stop here and make camp. You see, fella. There's something funny about that note. I've never yet seen Inspector Maynard sign himself the inspector. What's more, that half-breed couldn't tell us what he looked like. I think the whole thing was just a trick to get us out of town. But we're not going to fall for it, boy. Sergeant Preston wrote a short note. And then he said... All right, King, I'm going to tie this note to your collar. Take it to Inspector Maynard, fella. Inspector Maynard, back in Dawson City. Meanwhile, Abe Slater had gone to Dr. Elliott's cabin... What is it this time, Slater? I want to know if you're still aiming to fight that duel tomorrow morning. The duel is off. Sergeant Preston won't allow it. Sergeant Preston has left town, Doc. He had to go back to Dawson City. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the duel is still off. Boys around town are going to be mighty disappointed. What do you mean? Well, they're all counting on you and Jack fighting that duel now that Preston's out of the way. As a matter of fact, they've been hounding Jack ever since Preston left. They're saying he's yellow if he doesn't go ahead and shoot it out with you. So now he's sending you around to fix up another fake gunfight, is that it? You guessed it, Doc. Well, the answer's no. Preston has laid down the law, and that's all there is to it. Well, in that case, Jack says he don't see no reason for keeping that promise about Lorna. What's that? Oh, so that's the game. Shucks, you can't blame the kid, Doc. Hey, well, we'll fight that duel tomorrow morning. But I'm warning you, Slater... 
Rolf tries to back out of the bargain afterwards and starts hanging around Lorna again, I'll gun him down regardless of Sergeant Preston or the whole Northwest Mounted Police Force. It was long after midnight when King arrived in Dawson City. He went to Inspector Maynard's cabin. Why, King, what in heaven's name are you doing here? Come on in, fella. Just a minute now till I light the lamp. That's better. Well, I'll be... You've got a note tied to your collar. Let's have a look at it. Hmm. Inspector Maynard. Just received a message, supposedly from you, ordering me back to Dawson City. The inspector read the note, then said to King... Your master was right, King. I never sent such a message. Right out on answering, you'd better take it back to the sergeant right away. Early the next morning, Abe Slater went to Finn's shack on the outskirts of Faro City. Listen, Finn... There's been a change of plans. What's up? Andy Gower came into town late last night and said he saw Sergeant Preston camped about a mile outside of town. You mean he never fell for that note after all? Yeah, it looks that way. He's probably planning to stay out of sight till 8 o'clock. Then catch everybody red-handed just as the duel begins. Oh, that gums up the whole plan, don't it? Oh, not by a long shot. You see, as soon as the boys in town heard Preston was hanging around to stop the duel, they went and told Jack and Doc Elliott they'd have to fight their duel an hour early. Seven instead of eight. <laughs> Sounds like the whole town is just as anxious to have this shooting match come off as you are, Slater. Yeah, there's plenty of excitement, all right. The boys are all placing bets on who's going to win. Now, you and Muckluck go over to Hangman's Creek. Get settled in your hideout right now. The crowd will likely start over that way in another half hour or so. Right, boss. You just leave it to me. Shortly before 7 o'clock, Sergeant Preston stood beside his horse at his campsite outside of town. I hate to leave here before King gets back, but I guess we'd better ride into town and keep an eye on things. If that note was a trick, someone's awfully anxious to have that duel come off on schedule. Steady, Blackie. Easy. Get up, fella. Come on now. Arriving in Pharaoh City, Sergeant Preston was surprised to find the town deserted. Oh, Blackie, slow, easy, easy now. That's funny. Should be someone up and around even at seven in the morning. I wonder if they've decided to hold that duel early. Better get out to Hangman's Creek and investigate. Come on, Blackie! Meanwhile, King was approaching the sergeant's camp outside of town. All night long, the great dog had been traveling... His coat was caked with mud, and every muscle in his body ached, but he pressed forward gamely. Soon he would be feeling the touch of his master's hand and hearing warm words of welcome and praise. To King's surprise and disappointment, the campsite was deserted. Sergeant Preston was gone. The longed-for moment of rest and welcome would have to be postponed. The great dog paused for a moment to pick up the sergeant's scent. Then he faced wearily toward town and started off in pursuit of his master. On Hangman's Creek, the moment of the duel had finally arrived. Excitement ran high among the mob of onlookers that had streamed out from town. No one in the crowd except Abe Slater knew that two men lay hidden in a dense thicket on the hillside overlooking the scene of the duel. You got carbine ready, Finn? I sure have, Mucklock. I'm keeping a bead right on Yak Rolf's head. The minute he turns around to fire, I'll plug him right between the eyes. The crowd think Doc Elliot killed him, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, look like duel gone start. All right, I told you what to do now. I'm going to start counting. At the moment Abe Slater began counting, Sergeant Preston was racing toward the hillside. Both Finn and Mucklock saw him. It's Preston. He's coming to stop the duel. Me fixed him. Oh, not your gun. We don't want no noise. Use your knife. As Sergeant Preston drew closer, Mucklock poised his knife, ready to hurl it straight at the Mounty's heart. King, hearing the sounds of the mob, had taken a shortcut over terrain which the sergeant's horse could not cover. His keen eyes saw the two men crouching in the thicket, and he realized that the upraised knife was meant for Sergeant Preston. The great dog wanted to warn his master... But his breath was coming in painful gasps, and his lungs were already straining to bursting. Summoning his last ounce of strength, King drove toward the thicket. Hey, that's dog. King's attack threw both crooks off balance, and Finn's shot went wild. 
Hey, where'd that dog come from? Oh, no, easy. Ben swung his carbine to aim at the sergeant, but the Mountie fired first. Oh, my arm. Help, course, dog. He won't hurt you. All right, boy. On guard. I'll take over now. Get on your feet, both of you. A moment later, the sergeant and his two prisoners were surrounded by a milling mob. What tarnation's going on here? Uh, search me. Just as Jack and Doc fired at each other, things started happening up here on the hill. Now look, it's Finn and that sidewalk's pal of his. Hey, sergeant, what were them two sidewinders up to? Finn was all set to shoot Jack with a carbine, What's just that? as he and Dr. Elliot turned to face each other. Boy, that dirty polecat. We ought to string him up. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It wasn't my idea. Abe Slater was the one who planned it. No one's going to string anyone up. The law will deal with these two and Abe Slater. There he is, Sergeant, over there with Jack. Huh? Abe Slater guessed what had happened on the hillside. Let me through, please. And as the sergeant strove to break through the excited through, mob, Slater seized Dr. Right. Elliot. Slater! You going crazy? I got a gun right in your back, Doc. Sergeant, look, Slater's got a hold of Doc Elliot. Yeah, he's going to use him as a shield while he makes his getaway. Don't try shooting me, Preston. If you do, it's the doc who'll get hurt. Slater began backing quickly away, out of range of Sergeant Preston in the crowd. But suddenly... Oh! Hey, 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 Jack Wells. He winged Slater right in the arm. Yes, Slater forgot he was still in Jack's line of fire. All right, Slater. Stay where you are while I come over and put the cuffs on you. Later, as Sergeant Preston prepared to march the prisoners back to town, he spoke to Jack and Dr. Elliot. Mighty fast thinking, Jack. If you hadn't winged Slater, the doctor here might easily have stopped a few bullets. You're right, Sergeant. Ralph, I don't mind saying that I'm mighty grateful to you. But don't you think it's about time you two buried the hatchet? I guess you're right about that, too, Sergeant. What about it, Jack? Are you willing to shake hands? I'll be glad to, Doc. But I think we both owe a big debt of gratitude to Sergeant Preston. He saved me from Finn's bullet, and he saved you from a charge of murder. It wasn't I who saved you. It was King who saved us all. <laughs> yes, King, you're going to get a rub down, a meal, and a good soft place to sleep just as soon as we get back to town. <laughs> yes, boy, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Ask Mother, she knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why the famous breakfast cereals, Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. What's more, these choice ready-to-serve grains have restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So for the best, always ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Yes, to get the original, crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. It's never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Death and the Lucky Seven. King and I were on the way back from a long patrol when we found an old prospector who had been shot from ambush. With his dying breath, he told me that half a map showing the location of a gold claim had been stolen by the murderer. The trail led to a second killing. The case of the Lucky Seven ended with a surprise that nearly cost me my life. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker.